Welcome back to Dev Tips. You're about to get a. Just kidding. You're not gonna get a punch in the face. You're gonna get. You can get like some a coding video in your face. Today's video, we're gonna go back into CSS animations that we've been doing for the past few weeks. And today, I want to show you how CSS animations can help us step the user through a user flow and help them to anticipate what should be coming next for them and how things are related to each other. You'll see what I mean about that. And also I wanna show how we can use uh, addition and subtraction of classes to uh, add and take away animations. And we're gonna start this tutorial off in CodePen, of course, like we've been doing for the past few weeks. And I did as much as I could uh, to set this project up so we could go through it as fast as possible because I don't wanna waste your guys' time. But let me just walk you through where we're at right now, and then I'll go through and show you how I plan on uh, animating this project. So what we have here is a three-paneled kind of form, if you think about it like a three-step form. And here on the right is uh, the rendering of the code, and we have these three cards. For step one, which is the name and email, step two would be the, you know, the answer to the question, would you rather, and then step three is kind of like a confirmation and we're done. So there's three steps to this form and we have a, um, a uh, what's it called, a pagination up at the top here. So let me walk you through the markup for that. So of course we're using Jade because Jade is great. And the header here is just this bar here, which is right here. We have three spans is for one of each of these dots. And if it has a class is active, that means it's orange. Now these next three, one, two, three, step panels, I call them bodies, um, modal bodies. They are wrapped in a class called modal bodies and each of them is called a modal body. And then subsequently they have modal body step one and modal body step two. Is showing is a class that I'll use to control which one is visible at any given moment. And then I have the content for, the, for those modal bodies. So basically there's three modal bodies inside of a class called modal bodies. And then we have a text center uh, rerun button here to rerun the, the flow once it's done so we can like see the animation happening over and over again. So that's the HTML and this is the current output of the HTML and styles as we have it. We're here in the SAS and we just have a whole lot of, um, you know, visual stuff and styles for buttons and forms and things. Nothing is too, too critical to our uh, animations that we're gonna be doing until I get down to modal body. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, the position and I'm gonna say absolute. So now they're all in the same place, right? See, uh, step three is right on step up, top of step two, which is right on top of step one. And they're all anchored to the very top right here. And now I'm gonna take them all and put display none on all of them. And then I'll again reference that is showing class to say display block. So that's how I'm gonna have only one showing at a time by using the display property to control it. And that's kind of the end of the SAS as we have it written here. I also have some like not really great JavaScript written, um, but it's doing a few things. We're looking for a click of a button, and then when that happens, we're gonna grab a few variables, and then, um, we don't need a console log anymore, and then we're gonna send those variables on to a function, uh, one of two functions, depending on um, what number of step it is. So what it basically means is if it's on step one, and you click it, it's gonna remove the is showing class and put it on the next one. And it'll do that twice. And if it's on the third one, that's kind of a little bit different. It'll take that is showing and remove it and put it on the first one. Actually, it won't do that. I wanted it to animate the whole thing away and then have that rerun button come back. There's a few things to notice even further than just the uh, manipulating the is showing class. Let me bust open this inspector to show you exactly what I mean. So if I highlight this slide here, you can see all the three slides, right? One, two, and three. Actually, let's get it, let's get it on step one, refresh. Get that back on step one, slide one. Okay, so take, 
take peculiar note. Can I bump up the, okay. Yeah, I can make these bigger. All right, so take note of, of what's going on here because it's more than just the one class is showing. So we have modal body, modal body step one, two, and three, and then the class is showing. Now I'm gonna be moving the class is showing, but amidst all of the moving of that single class, I'm also doing a few other things. I'm adding a class animate out to step one as I want the animation to trigger to move it out of the way. And then I'm going to switch the is showing class to um, modal body step two and then add an animate in class for a certain time and then remove the animate in class. So let me uh, click this start button right here and pay attention right here to this, these classes. There's gonna be a lot of dancing around, ready? Did you see that? Let me do it again, and you'll notice the difference between step two and step three. We have these cl two classes, animate in and animate out, happening relatively quickly. And again, we saw what's happening up here. It's nothing too surprising. We just have the element, uh, the panel or the steps here, uh, removing themselves, and then the next one coming in. So there's a, a brief time in between them and, um, and we can use that time to perform animations. All right, so the idea that I'm trying to show here, and I wanna get it synced in, is, is that we're adding classes animate out, and we're setting a timer, and then we're removing the animate out, and is showing and adding animate in to the next one. And this is, this is pretty important, because remember, we did a few animations previously, and um, if you don't, I mean, the animate uh, property in CSS will trigger when a new uh, element is unhidden. When a uh, display none is removed from that element and it's visible, then the animation will start triggering. But if you make something uh, display none, immediately uh, no animation will trigger, even if like you wanted one. Um, so you have to put the animate out class in there. It's pretty important. And we'll see that in just a few seconds. So we'll see what we can do with a animate out class. Um, I think what we can do is say, well, we wanna put an animation on it, right? So let's just write our animation. And our animation, we'll just name it out, easy. And we'll make it last 300 seconds, 300 milliseconds by default, but we can adjust that in a few seconds. And we'll do ease in out, good old standby. And uh, we don't want any delay on it, but we do want to say forwards because we want the ending of the animation to um, stop on the last frame instead of resetting. Okay, so that's good. That's our animation out. Let's do, actually, you know, all these kind of, I have three of them. I have animate out, animate in, and animate up in that's easy and animate up that'll be easy right so i just need to make three sets of keyframes now at keyframes what are we doing this oh i have to name it look this is going to be out okay so when something animates out um let's do a transform I wanted to translate it, translate Y, and I just kind of like wanted to drop, right? To draw keyframes. I forgot how to do keyframes for a second. So we're gonna start at 0% and we're gonna go to 100%. So the ending uh, phase of this translate is gonna be like, I want it to go, you know, like 800 pixels down from the top and this actually needs to be indented. And then we're gonna start at transforming from zero. So the animation is gonna go, don't move any pixels, to move it 800 pixels down. We're gonna animate it down. Let's just see what that looks like right now. There we go, see, that was, that was easy. And the second one comes in. Let's quickly do an animate in here, because we already know how that's set up. Very similar to 
uh, keyframes out, but they're going to be in. So 0% transform. How about um, a little bit different? Let's flip it in from the top, similar to how we did those drop downs, but it's a little bit different. We'll say um, rotate X. I always get these two mixed up. Rotate X uh, 90 degrees. And we want it to end with zero degrees. So that's in, which correlates to the animate in class, which is temporarily put on step two when it animates in. So this is going to drop down, and this next one should, dang it, what happened? All right, now I'm just getting mad. I can't see it. I don't know what it is. Wait, I think I know what it is. Yep, okay, <laughs> that took so long, okay. So here's why, here's why that didn't work for so long is because I was not adding the is showing class until after I removed animate in. Is showing class is the class that makes it display block, right? Animate in, it wasn't displaying block when the whole animation was going. And by the time I wanted to remove animation in, I remove it and then add the display block, right? It needs to have a display block to even show. So I added display block to animate in. Um, I probably should actually do some work on this JavaScript to make it more compliant. But this is a quick, a quick fix that I'm happy with right now. Okay, so I had this idea of doing these rotates, these um, 3D rotates. Let's see how they look. Ooh, that's interesting. But I also want animate in to be, um, what is it, transform margin? The reason is uh, transform origin top left because I didn't like it spinning in the center. I wanted it to feel like it's flipping down from that head. It's so like this. Okay, that's coming from the front. What if we do negative 90? There you go. So it's like a calendar dropping off and flipping out, dropping off, flipping out. Um, what if we did? Oh, and by the way, for rotate X to work, you have to go to the thing it's on, which is modal body, and then go to the parent of that and say perspective a thousand pixels. That's how you get it to actually look like it's rotating in 3D space. Otherwise, it's gonna not. It's gonna look very flat. Otherwise, so let's look back at the anime out. I think the anime out could be a little bit better. Let's do. Let's do a rotate. Um, 30 degrees. No, that's where you're starting, huh? So let, let's end it. Copy. Let's end it at 30 degrees and then start with zero degrees. And let's take that transform origin and put it also on out. So it has, uh, so it has a, um, actually we just put it on the body, uh, the transform, uh, not transform body, modal body. So we'll put that here so that it'll apply to all of those states. Um, okay, so do you see how when it falls, it kind of tilts a little bit? That's pretty cool, but we can make it do a little bit more dramatic tilting, like it's being ripped off or like chopped off. Um, so let's, let's do this, take it to uh, 30% maybe. And still, we want to leave it at translate zero because we don't want it to fall off yet. But let's rotate it to 50 so it's going over exaggerating. Uh, see how that goes. So it should like hinge down. There we go. Oh, that was cool, but it was a little fast. So let's take that animation and slow it down to 600.
All right, that'll do it. And for this last one, enemy up, this one actually doesn't happen to the body. Let me show you, open the inspector here. Inspect this guy. Okay, so here's the modal wrap. This is the one that gets it. So uh, this animation happens to the, the modal body, but this last one get, gets it to the modal wrap to animate up, because I want the whole thing to just move out of the way a little bit. And so what we'll do is, Instead of doing animate up, why don't we do something like transform, uh, translate uh, y negative 500 pixels or something. So it'll just jump up that way. And rerun happens and we remove the animate up when we click rerun. So it comes back down and we get a start again. But when it comes down, we're in step one. So that's how we kind of have that. We can do translate and rotate. Rotate is so much fun. 30 degrees. Okay, so that's it. That's the whole animation. I wanted to show you guys how to use animation property to animate things in and out. And that's gonna come down to a lot of JS. Look at these lines here and notice, uh, especially in step, the function called step two or step one right here. Okay, this one, function step one. Notice how I'm using timers to um, say remove class and add class, animate in and animate out. So it's all like, it's like a thing you have to be careful with when you're animating, like transitioning like the last one. You can just say transition out and transition in and that works, but you can't make things display none with transition. But uh, you can transition uh, opacity and stuff like that, so that's fine. But to animate in and out, you have to use uh, class switching and some kind of like, you know, fiddly bits JavaScript. So take a look at this JavaScript here if you're interested in how I did that. Take a look at the SAS and uh, take a look at the Jade as well. And you know what you could do if you wanted to as a challenge, you could take these, uh, these steps here and go into uh, the CSS go to the animate in and out and just like re redefine these keyframes and make make some funky animations on your own and see what, what kind of fun stuff you can do and then link those down in the comments down below that'll be fun I love checking out you guys' uh, forks on my code pen it's always great thanks for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it leave a comment down below with your you know forks of the code that we did today. I wanna to thank the patrons for always supporting the channel. Uh, stop on by at patreon.com slash devtips to learn more about that. Patrons enjoy devtips chat, early videos, weekly hangouts, uh, community hangouts, and other things like that. So be sure to check that over there. And man, I'm just so glad to be back. This is exciting. We'll see you next week on next Monday. So keep on hacking. Um, so, let me, so let me throw, okay. Cool, uh, so let me walk you through the markup for that. It needs to flip in, animate in. Ah, why would this be bad? Rotate X in. Did I spell it wrong somewhere? Hmm, let me do like a different kind of transition to see if that is working. And then I'll know that the names are all connected, but not, but some for reason that the transform is, is working wrong. So this, this should animate over 300 milliseconds, let's see. Nope, that's not even connecting. Something's wrong. Uh, I'm sure you guys can see it at home right now. You guys are like, dude, why are you being so dumb, Travis? I can see it. And you're like shouting at me. I can't see it right now. Is it bad indenting somewhere? I'm not getting any errors. <laughs> All right, now I'm just getting mad. I can't see it. I don't know what it is. Hmm. Mm hmm. Wait. I think I know what it is.